Hello once again everyone and welcome to Cruznik's Purgatory. I'm your host Cruznik X and we are well into working throughout the entirety of jobs in terms of Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers. Um, it's been a long and winding road and a lot of aggravation but we finally got to level 80 on Samurai. And the gear looks frickin', pretty freaking awesome. Uh, I will say that much. Um, so... <coughs> Sorry. Um, so what I'm currently wearing is the weathered Kasuga gear. And this comes complete with Hanbo for the face, a Haori for the chest, uh, Kote for hands, the uh, Tsutsu Hakama for the legs and the Zori for feet. Um, also with it is our brand new level 80 samurai artifact, the do the weathered Dojikiri Yatsu Yasusuna. Um, now, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. Samurai was probably my most difficult of all the um of all the jobs to deal with only because um it's really you really have to rearrange a lot of stuff um but let's not talk about that let's talk about the changes to samurai starting with the role actions like we've always done now with the when con in conjunction with the new um, with Shadowbringer system, um, many things have changed. Um, now keep in mind, at the time of this recording, patch 5.1 has already come out. Um, now the story will come after this particular episode, but in the meantime, I wanted to get through as many as I could before going to the 5.1 storyline and uploading that to YouTube. Um, but anyways, uh, let's talk about role actions. First and foremost, of course, what we've lost because of the loss of TP, Invigorate and Goad have been removed, as well as Diversion and Crutch, which have been removed due to the new battle system. We still get Second Wind, our level 8 ability that instantly restores our own HP. We've got Leg Sweep at level 10, which stuns a target. Blood Bath at level 12, which converts a portion of physical damage dealt to HP. Faint at level 22, which lowers the target's strength and dexterity by 10%. Arm's Length, which creates a barrier, nullifying most not back and kick and draw in effects for 6 seconds. And inflicts the enemy with slow plus 20% when the barrier is struck. And finally, at level 50, we get True North, which nullifies all action direction requirements. Um, now that we've taken care of that, let's move on to Samurai. Now, Samurai hasn't really changed much. We've only lost two skills in this particular one. Um, the gauges haven't really changed, and how it works hasn't really changed at all. Just a bit, some ability changes, some EI Jutsu changes, and a whole range of new abilities. So let's get right down to it. Let's start off with what we've lost. We've lost Hagakure and Ageha, which were two skills that I really don't think I utilized when I first started Samurai. And I don't think, uh, I don't really think they mattered as much as other skills. Let's move on to some current ability changes. First off, the level weapon, the level one weapon skill Hakaze has been increased to a 200 potency as opposed to its pre Shadowbringers potency of 150. The level 4 weapon skill Jinpu has now been increased to a 320 combo potency as opposed to its pre-Shadowbringers potency combo potency of 280. The level 6 ability Third Eye has reduced it has increased its damage reduction to 10% as opposed to the 5% pre-Shadowbringers. 
the level 15 weapon skill NP now has an enhanced bonus, an enhanced NP bonus potency of 320 as opposed to 300 pre Shadowbringers. The level 30 abil weapon skill Gekko now has a combo potency of 480 as opposed to 400. The level 35 weapon skill Mangetsu now has a combo potency of 160 as opposed to its original 200, but the damage fall off has been removed. The level 40 weapon skill Kasha now has a 480 combo potency increased from 400 pre Shadowbringers. The level 45 weapon skill Oka now has a 160 combo potency. It has been reduced from its original 200, but the damage fall off has been removed. The level 50 ability Mekyo Shisui now has a 60 second, a 55 second recast time, reduced from its original 80 second recast time pre Shadowbringers, and now has a 15 second duration as opposed to a 10 second duration. Um. Oh, Yuki Kaze. Uh, I'm like really losing. Or at least I think it's Yuki Kaze. It says level 50 on this list, but it doesn't show. Um, the level 50 Yuki Kaze has been increased to a 360 combo potency as opposed to its original 3 40, but the slashing resistance down debuff has been removed in conjunction with the new battle system. The level 62... The level 62 ability Hisatsu Shinten now has a potency of 320 as opposed to 300 pre-Shadowbringers. The level 66 ability Hisatsu Segan now has a 220 potency increase from its original 200. And finally, the level 70 ability Hisatsu Guren now has its damage fall off removed. Let's talk about a few Iajutsu changes before we continue. First and foremost, the level 30 Iajutsu Higanbana now has a potency of 250 as opposed to its pre-Shadowbringers potency of 240. The, <laughs> the potency fall off for the weapon skill Tenka Goken is now removed. And finally, the potency of Mirare Setsugeka has now been increased from 720 to 800. Let's talk about some new abilities, shall we? <laughs> First and foremost, at level 68, we get a new ability called Ishis Ikishoten. This is a 60 second recast time ability that increases the Kenki gauge by 50 points. At level 72, we gain the ability Hisatsu Sene, which delivers an attack with a potency of 1100. It has a 120 second recast time, a Kenki gauge cost of 50 points, and shares a recast timer with Hisatsu Guren. At level 74, we gain the trait Enhanced Ei Jutsu, which in reduces Ei Jutsu's cast time to 1.3 seconds. At level 76, we gain the ability Subame Gaeshi, which repeats the previously executed Ei Jutsu with increased potency. This can only be used immediately following Ei Jutsu. It triggers the cooldown of weapon skills upon execution and cannot be executed during the cooldown of weapon skills. This has a 60 second recast time, but it is so satisfying to use. Let's talk about how it's used. So, as you can see at the bottom here, at level 76, we gain three new abilities. First and foremost, Kaeshi Higanbana, which is a 
which has a 3 ohm range and a 60 second recast time. This delivers an attack with a potency of 375 with an additional effect of damage over time with a potency of 60 for 60 seconds. It also grants a stack some it also grants a stack of meditation. Well, I'll talk about the meditation part a little late. It also grants a stack of meditation up to a maximum of three. The effect cannot be stacked with Higanbana. It triggers the cooldown of weapon skills upon execution and cannot be executed during the cooldown of weapon skills. This is basically the Tsubame Gai Gaishi of Higanbana. The Tsubame Gaishi of Tenka Goken is Kaishi Goken. This is an 8 yom range, 60 second recast ability, which delivers an attack with a potency of 540 to all enemies in a cone before you. It also grants a stack of meditation and triggers the cooldown of weapon skills upon execution. Finally, the Tsubame Gaishi of Mirare Setsugeka is Kaishi. Setsugeka. This delivers an attack. This is a 3 arm range, 60 second recast time ability with that delivers an attack with a potency of 1200. Let's continue on. At level 78, we gain the trait Enhanced Gene Pool and Shifu, which improves Gene Pool's damage increased to 13%, and Shifu's reduction to weapon skill cast time and recast time, spell cast time and recast time, and auto attack delay to 13%. Finally, the level 80 ability that we gain is Shoha. This is a 3 Yom range, 15 second cooldown ability which delivers an attack with a potency of 400. This ability can only be executed upon, after accumulating three stacks of meditation by executing Iya Jutsu, Subame Gaeshi, or Meditate while in combat. Meditate, the meditation's effect fades upon execution. So, a lot of power, more, a lot more power. Um, it's still not as, um, it still really doesn't give the team any boost. It's really just a hard-hitting DPS. Um, so, all in all... I mean, it is fun to use, but... I may just change up my Samurai Hotbar before the next expansion. We'll see what happens um, in the coming... We'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Well, in the coming expansion, I mean. Anyway, moving on. Now, we have been through a lot with the Samurai questline. Between meeting Musosai, learning his real... His true identity, and then helping the Sekisegume with... The Seki Segumi with um, apprehending a criminal or bringing a criminal to justice. We've been through a lot in Kugane, and we're back in Kugane now um, with Mak Makoto, who uh, is now the head of the Se well, <laughs> is the head of the Seki Segumi now. Um, so let's see how she's been progressing. Let's not waste any more time because I've only got a few more minutes before I have to get ready for work and get right down to it with the level 80 quest, The Legend of Musosai. Chris, how good of you to pay me a visit, and now of all times. You see, I'm about to depart for Eosia to visit Master Musosai's grave to tell him of our victory over Ugetsu. That you should come to me at this juncture is most fortuitous. Would you do me the honor of accompanying me on this journey? Thank you, my friend. And lest you wonder, I've not forgotten about Momozigo. I would call upon him as well. Upon arriving, let us first go to the quicksand. 
All right, let's head to Ulda. I gotta say, I lo still love the running, the sprint, uh, for, uh, the sprint animation for a samurai. Alright, now that I'm here, I might as well turn off auto run. Where is, oh, he's outside. Or Makoto's outside. Alright. Let's get on with it. I'm afraid Momozigo isn't here. According to the folk here, he is in the midst of preparing for another spectacle. Though I'm curious as to what he has in store. We shouldn't keep Master Musasai waiting. Let us go to his grave first. The place was the Silver Bazaar, if I recall correctly. Come. Let us be on our way. The Silver Bazaar is Western Thanalan. I still haven't gotten the mount speed boost for any of Thanalan yet. I I think I just recently finished receiving or getting all the mount speed boosts for yeah, for all of Lenosha, so and I've only got South Shroud and North Shroud to get before I continue with Thanalan, so I mean, once I get done with uh With the Black Shroud, Western Dandelion will be first on my list, but... There's Makoto. The town is much livelier than I recall, and there are folk attired as samurai besides. Curious. But come, Master Musasai awaits. There's the grave. didn't, Master Musasai. With Chris standing with us, we defeated Ugetsu and put an end to his madness. And your teachings, your legacy, they live on in the Seki Segumi. So please, rest easy. Tis done. Thank you for accompanying me. Ah! I won't stand for this mummery! That sounds like trouble. Let's go and see what is afoot. Dressing like a samurai don't make you one! You bastard sully Master Musasai's memory! The 
Balls, balls. It's... It's you! Ah! That man knows you and Master Musasai both. I would find out who he is. Yeah, I'd like... Oh, he's trying to hop the next ferry out of here. Forgive me, I've learned my lesson. Since you trounced me on the ship, I've mended my ways. Ostergrain. Uh, I am Ostergrain, the bodyguard to a serial killer who thought he could take you on. But I've stopped selling my sword to crooks. I live an honest life now, selling toad oil. It seems to me the evil in this man has been excised. You have not to fear from Chris. Please, be at ease, and tell us the cause of your earlier outburst. You see, after I saw what a true samurai could do, I knew I wanted to become one too. So I sought Master Musosai out, hoping he'd take me on as a pupil only to learn he'd already passed away. Since then, I've been visiting his grave every day in order to get inspiration. Recently, though, someone's been telling the tale of Master Musasai's quest to right wrongs of the quicksand. On account of that, people started dressing up like samurai and flocking to his grave like it's some god's damn spectacle. But they're false, the whole lot of them. Falser than I ever was. I had the honor of knowing Master Musasai. And the Master Musasai I know would be glad of his if his tale inspired others to follow in his footsteps. And though he was a solitary man, he did not spurn the company of others. I don't believe he would mind I don't believe he would mind the crowds. Really? Well, I suppose you know better than me. Ah, uh, but of course. Might be as Master Musasai is gone, but you were his pupil. I beg you, teach me how to be a true samurai like you. Hmm. Chris has much demands on his time and is not in a position to take on pupils. But if you are determined to learn, I invite you to come to Kugane. I can introduce you to schools of swordsmanship. You mean I can train in the Far East? When it all began? I'd love nothing more! It'd be a dream come true! Very well. A long journey is better with company. Let us return to Gugane together. Though, I wonder, this someone who has been telling the tale of Master Musasai's quest. It seems to me it could be only one person. It would be a shame to have come all this way and not see our friend. Let us try visiting the quicksand again. All right, back to Old Ah. I swear he better be here.
It's Ulster Green. As I suspected, Momo Zigo is indeed our storyteller. And as luck would have it, he's about to begin another session. Well, he's certainly changed a bit. Gather ye round, one and all, and listen to my tale. A tale that began with an unlikely meeting between a young adventurer and an elderly samurai hailing from the Far East. Known as Musosai, the samurai took on challenges upon the blood sands. Many answered his call, but none had an answer to his transcendent swordsmanship. For a time, it seemed that he would go undefeated. But there came one unassuming adventurer, wielding the katana, a foreign weapon he had theretofore never held. He fought with heart and skill to claim victory. After journeying the realm over, vanquishing evil together, never could the adventurer have imagined that, for his final test, he must vanquish Musasai himself. Left with no recourse, he drew his katana and faced his friend and master. A grueling battle unfolded, with neither side yielding a single ilm. The adventurer brought his all to bear. But he was matched at every turn by Musosai, who unleashed technique after deadly technique, betraying no signs of the illness that ravaged his body. But at the end of a contest of equals, it was the younger samurai who dealt the final blow to emerge the victor. His master had trained him well. As he lay battered and bloodied on the snow, Musosai demanded that his pupil finish it. Shutting his eyes tight, the adventurer raised his katana. Whoosh! The blade traced a vicious arc! And cleaved the empty air. The adventurer had excised the evil in Musosai, as Musasai himself had done for those who could yet be redeemed. So it was that the elderly samurai found peace in his final moment. It is said that his soul now rests atop the cliff by the Silver Bazaar, where he gazes out at the setting sun. And somewhere out there, the young adventurer continues his noble master's legacy, fighting for justice, and vanquishing evil wheresoever it should exist. So ends my tale. The Legend of Musosai. Thank you all for your kind attention. I gotta give a clap for that. That was definitely a touching story. You know, it's harder to do this with you lot in the audience. 
But it's good to see you all. Even Mr. Fake Samurai. You're doubtless wondering how I fell into my new calling. Well, during my trip to Kugane, I had the chance to hear a storyteller at the Muji Zo the Muji Koza. I knew right away that this is what I wanted to do. What my what my gift of the gab was meant for. That was a masterful and heartfelt retelling. I pray that you will continue to share the tale of Master Musasai with all the world. You can depend on it. Though, of course, if I'm to be a storyteller worth my salt, I'll need some variety in my repertoire. Chris, you're still out there doing your adventuring, aren't you? Don't you have any new tales to share that could make for a good yarn? Well, uh... Struggle to save the first. <coughs> By the Twelve! Your quest to right wrongs took you across the rift into another world? Truth really is stranger than fiction. My thanks, Chris. This will be a splendid addition to my tales. I'm afraid it's time we sought our ship. Brief though it was, I'm glad for our reunion. I'm gonna train hard in Hingashi, and I'm gonna come back a real samurai. Just you watch! If your travels should bring you to Gugane again, please come seek me out at the barracks. Till next time. Hopefully we'll see them again. To think that Pretender would have a change of heart and try to become a true samurai. The old man will be pleased. It goes to show... Musasai's legacy truly lives on in you, Chris. And it takes root even in the hearts of those you've sliced up. So keep fighting the good fight, my friend. And remember to visit me from time to time to share more of your tales. And with that, we've completed yet another path. We've earned the achievement Sam I Am 3. And with it, we've gained another new title. Samurai in a Strange Land. Well, with that, we close the book on another path quest line, un at least until the door is open again in the next expansion. But we'll have to see when the next expansion comes out. But until then, I'm afraid that's all we have for this episode of Cruise Next Purgatory. I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you all enjoyed this episode. As always, if you're watching this on Twitch or live with PlayStation and you like this show, click the follow button. Be sure to turn on notifications so you're well informed. And be sure to subscribe to me for access to exclusive live streams and videos. If you're watching this on YouTube and you like this video, click the like button below and leave a comment. Subscribe to my channel by clicking here. Click here to watch more by me. Click here to watch the next episode when it comes out in the new expansion. And click here to watch the original Stormblood ending. Until next time, Cruz the Gex. Signing out. <laughs>